just give folks a couple more minutes before we talk about the scope for today. Okay. Let's wait one more minute and then get started. John is not going to be with us today because he has some other appointment. So. Time to get started. Uh, so, this at this conference call, I want to at least have a chance to speak about the upcoming IDF meeting, which is uh, next week, and to talk a little bit about the agenda. I have posted an um, email today to the list showing a, a, a very brief agenda that I put together so we have something online. Um, which of course includes the architecture document, the use case document, and uh, the other, the, the receipt document. Um, but I, it would be nice to allocate uh, speakers to those presentations, as well as uh, have a rough indication on the time slot needed uh, for each of them. And then um, equally important to actually know what issues we want to tackle during the meeting. Okay. And um, Steve, do you want to? Obviously... Honest, did you want to share your screen or you want me to share for the, the, the template you started putting together? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I will take meeting minutes so I can't share and take the meeting minutes at the same time. Um, okay. If share. someone else could share, that would be great. I can, I'm happy to share. And cool. Thank you, Rish. Let me see if I have the... Yeah, why do you search uh, for this? I... So, yeah, you'll get share this. I'll paste the link to the notes that Hannes put out. No, no, I have the notes. That's not a problem. I'm just figuring it out. Um, how do I uh, ask for request sharing permission on ITF? I keep forgetting this presentation view or how do i ask permission for data tracker request to ask I for think, permission uh on the on the left hand side uh there's the panel at least on for my for my version and then you can do share screen next to sort of like the microphone and the camera and so on okay, presentation view gallery view notes making tool meeting materials so it's right below your name there's a little computer screen. Ah. But um, also uh, quite important is the question of like, ah, I got it. Yeah. yeah, going to be at the meeting itself. Grant, what are you sharing with? Uh, with uh, yeah. I, I don't I don't see yet what you are sharing, but uh, somebody but sharing, yeah. No, you. That's why. No, I'm not sharing. I've I've got choose deck to share, uh, but I don't. It says you're sharing slides. Yeah, it says so. 
But I can't oh. see the slides uh, for some reason. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me try again, actually. Yeah. Ask to share slides. But but you don't You're have any slides. slides to share you need screen. to share a screen. OK. I got it. Yeah. It's the yeah. icon next to it. Yeah. Um, OK. Yeah. Here we go. Everybody should be able to see the agenda now. Uh, not yet. Not yet. But um, why do you do that? Uh, and do we know who is going to be at the meeting? Uh, so because that's quite important from uh, for the presenters. Obviously, I think it would be good to have um, a number of the presenters be in the room um, to discuss something rather than having everyone uh, presenting from remote. Hank? Yeah, hi, this is Hank. Yeah. Okay, I'm audible. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm in a weird Wi-Fi in Sweden, but it works. That's great. So um, I will be in Japan. Yes. Okay, cool. And uh, I can be a fallback for any kind of presenter. I think some time zones suffer from uh, time zone divergence, I guess. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't want to impose but i could do the architecture presentation uh, i can also i would also gladly uh uh relinquish it to steve if he feels comfortable with the time well so i thought about that and it's not just the time difference because i can deal with that but if you think about how we assembled the presentation the last couple of times it wasn't just like this one online meeting where everybody was very easy to just not, just not easy. It's, it's not simple just to get on a meeting and just coordinate it. It was walk around with a laptop, constantly meeting in the bar or table, wherever else we can get people together. Um, so as much as I would love to help without being on site, I don't think it's um, practical for me to facilitate this at this time. I mean, I can throw together a template and put together some stuff, taking what Hannes had here, but <clears throat> filling in all the content on the daily basis leading up to the actual presentation, I think we need to have whoever's on site. So who is on site? Like I know, Hank, you're going to be there. Ori's going to be there. Do we know who else is going to be? So I will be, uh, and I can cover either the architecture or the computer setting, because the, uh, Oh, Cedric, you actually got approval to go to London? Yes, yes, oh, yes. So I'm representing uh, Microsoft Cambridge. I will be there from uh, Saturday morning. Okay, so what you're Wonderful. saying on location, so Roy is going to be there. Kay, you're going to be there? Yeah, it looks like so. Okay. Yes, I'll be there. Sorry. I was uh, finding the unmute button. Okay, great. That's, that's great. Um, Who else is from our group going to be there? Are there others that we have that we don't have in the notes? If you happen to switch to look at the notes document, I'm. Yeah. Uh, are you going to remote. join from remote? Or? Yeah, I, I have permission to join remote. So I'm happy to um, kind of present anything remotely, but I, I cannot certainly travel to okay. Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good enough. Uh, I'd be happy to, uh, if if um, if it would help, I'd be happy to present the use cases doc. Anything on the use cases document. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. That's that's excellent. Uh. uh Steve. Um. From mm -hmm. the architecture document, do you have specific issues that uh, you think are worthwhile to spend time on? I mean, I'd like to get the, the thoughts in the group because we spend so much time working on the issues and the terminology and so forth. Um, some of the pieces that were coming up most were uh, understanding the core concept of what uh, Skip provides, which is that verification of an identity related to content. So I'm not sure if we want to focus on that as the core part of the presentation, that basically you submit something to Skip. Uh, the identity is verified, and as long as the verified identity gets in, uh, endorsed or notarized, or the, maybe that's the piece that we want to focus on, and then the content comes out. 
Uh, that was one part that I think we wanted to try to, I don't know, ratify is the right word on, on getting that solidified there. And then the other was the conversation related to um, the Merkle tree formats, because that's the other one that's coming up uh, that Hank had been facilitating. So I, I guess I'll put that up for conversation. What do people think about those as the, the main topics in the architecture? So, so, so you, you mentioned the identity, uh, uh, the, um, would you call the terminology a separate item from the identity? Because that was also something uh, Ray put forward with his diagram. I think we had a lot of uh, good discussion there. Is that, is that what you meant? Yeah, I think you know, Ray's diagram kind of helps zoom out to put perspective to the pieces that we've been talking about. Um, and we've, that helped facilitate some of the conversations in the latest merger. Uh, mm -hmm. I think when we talk about the architecture doc, what is the core concepts that we want to participate, you want to uh, convey? And what I've heard us solidifying around and trying to get a little more um, understanding is the notarization of content. So that it's not just any ID goes in, an identity of a statement is submitted the registration policy is evaluated. And as long as the identity is verified and the registration policy is, is validated, the statement is placed onto the log. I was hesitating, I was making sure I get the right terminology. And that process we've been discussing, or it's been discussed on what should we call that, and that would be the notarization. I know in just to circle it, because I see Ray's name pop up there. I know, Ray, you were talking about that that might be a separate process, that anything could go on the ledger and then it asynchronously gets notarized. I think, I don't think that's what the architecture reflects today, so we can certainly bring it up if you'd like. Um, but that would be, so I'll, I'll wrap up real quickly. So I think one is, do we want to just affirm that that's the process of what we think the SKIT, register, SKIT service represents? And then do we want to put time into the Merkle tree conversation as the new ID that's coming in? So with that, I'll stop. Okay, uh, now I have a couple of people in the queue. Um, I, I tried to sort of note that I, I created three bullets, uh, the Merkle tree, the identity, and I call it terminology slash building blocks. Uh, but uh, Kay, uh, go ahead. Yeah, just a, a quick comment on the terminology. It might be useful to identify what things we've resolved since the last meetings and then what things are still open. Because we did make progress, at least on the resolving statement versus statements and claims, and, and we still have uh, an additional terminology around what we call the ledger slash transparency service slash log. Yep. Yeah, we definitely have made question for the group as people queue up. Do we? So this is what we were just talking asynchronously about. Of from now until the meeting and through the meeting, do we want to continue to thrash on the terminology or use the current terminology in the doc, just so we can make progress on things outside of that terminology? Because I'm afraid we're still in this. Uh, cycle of debating terminology as opposed to the larger scope of what we're trying to achieve. Mm. I um, yeah, I think I think the the discussion about the terminology uh, turned into a, a a question about better understanding what the individual building blocks or components are. Um, and I think that was a that was a good discussion, and maybe we should finish that. Then it's easier once we know what the building blocks are and what their semantics is, it's easy to give them some names, or at least easier. Uh, so, yeah, With, uh, I, I wouldn't, so we can, of course, if, if you guys uh, make some progress on this till the meeting, that would uh, obviously be great, but the meeting is already next week, so I wouldn't uh, expect a miracle suddenly. Okay, uh, Dick. Oh, thank you, Hannes. Um, I, I'd like to just, make a recommendation that we put more emphasis on the purpose of SCIT. And by that, I mean, it's, it's really to provide a higher degree of transparency 
into the software supply chain trustworthiness for consumers or the people who are going to be using software. So that would be my recommendation is that we, is that we make that a much clearer aspect or clearer in the document, in the architecture document. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, I think in general, um, like if we hand over the document to someone who is completely new to SCIT, um, ideally they should be able to understand the use case and, uh, and the architecture document, at least um, to a certain extent. Like if they don't understand the problem, then <laughs> obviously there's an issue. Yeah, I, I agree. I, that's my point is it, it doesn't hurt to be very clear and explicit in our documentation yeah. that this is what it's for. That's yeah. entirely up to the group. Thanks. Yeah, we can definitely ask uh, some some people who are not part of this conversation to review the, the the current document versions and to give us some feedback. I think that would be um, extremely useful. So if you know someone, I know some people. Uh, I will I will do that. Yeah, that's a good good idea. Thanks, Dick. Hank. Uh, yeah, hi, this is Hank. Uh, several comments. So um, at the very beginning, I heard Cedric is a good candidate for the architecture presentation in general. And I think Kay is a good candidate for the presentation of the use cases in general. I agree with that. Um, we are uh, not alone, so everybody can help. Um, to the point of uh, now I'm splitting to the point of um, creating presentations and the meeting is next week. Uh, we will be very verbose email wise on the list towards that goal of having slides that everybody is not surprised by uh, at the meeting. Um, I, uh, we can start early, but I think the hackathon is one time frame. It's Saturday and Sunday in Japan where we can uh, polish and, and tinker the slides still. And I think we have to very verbose. That's not just three people sitting at the table doing it like in secret, but we want to push ideas, questions to the mailing list. I know it's a weekend, but for IETF, uh, the hackathon weekend is basically the, the hardest work uh, part. Um, then um, talking about the architecture, I think Cedric can, is, is an excellent choice to, to just co convey the whole thing. Where are we at? What are the current issues? What are we doing here? I think there's a interesting conundrum that we have to resolve via the architecture. And one step of resolving that is pointing that out in the slides for architecture document is the contrast but between what we are specifying in the ITF as building blocks and how they are used to compose bigger system. And that is what Ray is, is, is trying to, to, to uh, make this, uh, lay out, highlight, right? So now I think I, I start to assume that the architecture uh, has to initially take on that task of, of telling the story of how these tiny building blocks that we are building actually are to be co utilized um, to build bigger systems. And I think that's something, should there be a point of discussion, a long discussion at the IETF meeting, maybe half an hour actually, uh, so just as a proposal, as a discussion point. And I uh, just looked at the agenda. That's my final comment. Um, COSI will have a presentation on a generalized COSI structure describing Merkle trees in general. Ori has the lead on that ID. Uh, that is basically the successor to the specific receipt ID. The receipt for SCID potentially will, will in air quote, just become a profile of that ID in COSI. And luckily, COSI happens before SCID. So, I think a report from the COSI working group uh, with respect to that uh, context of the uh, uh, received ID in SCID is in order. So, whoever is doing that uh, should basically come there and say, oh, by the way, COSI hated it or whatever. You know, basically loved it. I don't know. And, and go from there. And, that, and, uh, and that's all I want to say. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ray. Okay. Hi. Thanks. All right. So, uh, one thing I ran across this last uh, period of time, I guess last week, is the use of the word trust versus trustworthy and trustworthiness. I noticed, I, I thank Dick for saying trustworthy versus trust. Um, trustworthiness and then 
Uh, so that's one thing I just wanted to bring up. That's a good way to kind of try to dodge the issue of, of the sort of emotional thing, which is trust versus being trustworthy, which is more of a uh, more of a, you know, deterministic thing. So um, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm not going to go to Japan. <laughs> I would love to because I love Japan, but I'm not going. Um, and secondly, um, so I may try to <clears throat> participate remotely um, if I can. But regarding this high level diagram, which I, I don't want to try to make that be a any kind of a, um, you know, handcuffs or anything to, to force anything. But I want I, I think that's important to point out the difference between what the registry produces in terms of, of evidence and uh, creating some sort of a final uh, you know, determination about whether something is, can be trusted or it should get a big green check mark, um, which may actually require some form of artificial intelligent uh, evaluation at that point. And that's not part of the registry. Second uh, thing Ray, I want to bring Ray, yeah. um, May I, um, I was trying to sort of, I, I think you tried to convey an important point about your diagram, but I wasn't quite I didn't quite got for the meeting minutes what oh, that okay. is. Okay, yeah. so so on the sort of if you can remember the diagram on the right side where of course yeah. where there were the people viewing into the into the registry looking at it, not submitting data, just looking evaluating the data. That the evaluation, the final evaluation of <clears throat> of the evidence would not be, you know, inside the registry. That would be something that would be done at another layer. And, and so um, this was something that I, that I briefly said, just that there were two layers. Um, but uh, that, that I think is an important thing because, you know, um, I, I, I really respect the, the position that Dick is bringing to the meeting where he wants to have that final big green check mark. But I don't think that's part of what the registry necessarily provides and so I was trying to point that out on the diagram. Um, did that clarify it for you, Hannah? Uh, uh, definitely. I think it also lines up with what Hank has previously mentioned about this uh, idea of like describing the building blocks to create the bigger systems. Uh, so, so I think uh, that's definitely uh, a longer conversation. I think it's a good conversation to have. So we should definitely allocate more time to this. Yeah. So on one other point I wanted to make, as I was thinking about <coughs> this diagram and and what is the registry or a log append only log as people i think is a pretty popular way to say it um and if you can have any other like uh if you can have say skit registry somewhere else and that you would say okay well we're going to allow these to be distributed then you could also say the skit registry could just have one item in it and that could be distributed. And then then this, 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 the final point is, why not have everything just have one item in it and not have some sort of centralized registry? So I, I think we need to think through, because I don't know the answer to that. I don't know why exactly. Maybe there's some very good rationale why an append-only log is, or ledger of uh, these kind of things is necessary. Maybe they're not. And if they're not, then uh then maybe it's better to have a more highly distributed uh concept uh, and and i and so that may be too much to tackle in this one meeting but if you had additional time thinking about what we need like this append only log is a popular thing to say but do we need that and and again if if it can be one item in the log and that can be distributed and you can have distributed logs then why not just start with and say that they're all they, they all just have one item in them and now work back from there okay enough from me thank you thanks thanks Ray. charlie is charlie? It charlie mute yeah uh having trouble with mute there can you hear me yeah now we can okay so a couple of things i guess uh 
the first thing I think I just want to observe is that the queuing system with raising of hands is uh, quite fair and that everybody has to get in line. But I do think that uh, somebody should declare themselves king or queen and uh, run an agenda because we're taking too long, I think, to get through these various points. And uh, I think a little more structured discussion would be uh, a way to, uh, you know, to, to kind of put a pin in these things and, and move on. Uh, so that's my, that's my sort of meta suggestion. The second thing is, I guess I have a question, which is going to be followed by some comments. Uh, who is the audience at this meeting? Is this just another, I mean, is it going to be similar to this meeting? Or uh, is it, is it uh, some larger population that will have influence? Or how, what is the, uh, the Japan meeting uh, yeah. uh, purpose it, and um, nature? Yeah, it's a, it's a wider audience. Uh, so uh, people who are at the meeting uh, can will uh, drop in. So there will be a large a larger number of people. Like, I have to look it up. But maybe last time we had maybe 100, 150 people or so in the room. Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. So, so, so this is sort of a, a little bit of a show and tell then as well, right? It, it, it definitely helps. Um, on one hand, of course, we want to get people who haven't followed <coughs> discussions on the same page uh, or at least get interested in the work uh, but on the other hand we also want to make some progress so there's the typical right. expectation that at least the documents have been read which is why we have this sort of blackout period where no new document submissions are permitted yeah okay so uh so here, here are my comments then so the first one is we have yet to uh, uh have the debate about uh the identification and what we're going to allow there. Uh, we originally specified COSI and uh, there, I mean, I personally feel that, that we need to expand that just to you know, kind of give a, a nod to what's really going on in the practical world. Uh, second thing is the idea of the Merkle tree uh, is kind of inherent with COSI. And I think we have moved well, hands, on that. Can you back up and tell me your thoughts there? On what? Mm -hmm. On expanding COSI. Well, COSI is just one method of identification, and there are many now. I mean, certificates are the main one, right? So, Co COSI uh, is a serialization format. It supports both X509 certificates and DIDs. Are you talking about changing the serialization format representation or identity mechanisms which are supported within? Uh, good question. I'm not sure. But bottom line is that uh, we, you know, if we restrict I personally don't know of any use that uh, of any use case that COSI is active in right now. Perhaps there are many, right? But uh, I know that uh, it is not the dominant way of describing identity. And my question is, you know, do we want to lock ourselves into something that's yet to uh, achieve wide adoption? Actually, so, it's in all. It's required for all IoT devices. You know, the, the largest one is SMIME, which we're not doing. Um, the the largest one is, I'm sorry, what was that, right? It's secure messaging, SMIME, oh, okay. PGP. Those are the largest serialization formats. They both support X509. I, I think you're kind of getting it wrapped around an axle here, which is Maybe. one is the serialization format of how to represent the data in the, the fields, and the other one is the identification identity format within right. it that's referenced. And I agree that X509 and, and the open question for the, the, the IETF is, do we want to slowly move or in support other types of identification mechanisms such as DID web and so forth? None exactly. of it is changing the serialization format. We're looking for one that is extensible over the time. Okay, so, well, maybe that, that question is answered then, but I do think the, uh, uh, just from a practical adoption perspective, we need to make sure that we allow backward compatibility here. So that's, uh, that's that's comment one. And so the comment two was the uh, um, the uh, append only thing. Uh, Ray mentioned, why do we need append only? I actually am scratching my head on that as well. Uh, it is it's certainly a way to, uh, you know, ensure that you continue to have that log. Uh, so I don't, I'm, I'm not religious about that. But, uh, you know, there are other other ways to manage that. So, uh, so that's, that's point two. And so then uh, are, point three is written up somewhere, Charlie. They, you know, they're going to need write-ups 
for what you think your points yeah. are before the discuss. You, you you know when you you throw these things out in the ITF meeting, you're going to end up getting knee jerk reactions without having some basis to to frame yeah. the discussion. Well, yeah, well, right. So I'm throwing it out of this meeting instead of at the IETF meeting, so we can maybe get some of those. And so, um, so then, the, and then the third thing is, uh, you know, if we are requiring uh, some um, vetting, I'm using that term, you know, on purpose uh, because it's vague. Uh, if we require some vetting before an entry can be made in Skit. Uh, doesn't that imply a trusted third party who's going to be out there, um, you know, administering this thing? And, you know, I think that that's a, a an undefined role right now. So actually, it's the similar role you have for human notaries, right? They're the ones that validate your identity, and they're doing it on the basis of what the the marketplace is requiring, right? In this case, yeah, that would be no, completely identity agree. So but totally agree. But you're, you're but getting how into do I, an area yeah. which is talking about federation, and that one is is more advanced even than what you're referring to. Yeah. Well, right. And the, you know, transitive properties of trust and everything like that are uh, are other issues as well. But I mean, how are we going to get that in there? How are we going to say, okay, that is or isn't okay for Skit without somebody administering it? Centrally, there, there's multiple aspects of that. If you have your own corporate or um, subgroup that has their own skit instance, then it's up to the management of that corporation or that ed, that that identity. In the case of governments, they're going to set up their own yeah. um, you know, set of trusts. So it, it's going to end up being, if you start talking at larger scales, you're talking about clouds, which means uh, AWS, Google, Microsoft, and so forth, they may say, hey, here's our trust relationship similar to what we do with Notary, with Docker, and and so forth. And the policies of how those federations work are an interesting question, which is why I said it's a larger question yeah. than just that. Right. And that's, I guess that's, that's uh, intrinsic in my point is uh, if we're doing that, then why wouldn't we allow that administrator to decide why does it need to be notarized why does it have to be a special format for identity why can't we let the administrator of or the, the trusted third party uh simply make that decision based on you know multiple choice or a bunch but of things let's, we'll let's not dig into the, the those details now uh because i think we are collecting the items that we are going to discuss at the meeting next week which is two, two yeah. hours long uh and so um Charlie, from your um, item list, I have um, uh, captured um, the 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 identity question. I think you are also like I consider the last point um, a little bit similar to what uh, Steve raised with the debate about the building blocks. Um, I think this is, again falls into that category. So uh, definitely something that is uh, quite important and. Like to me, from from the discussion so far, and, and maybe we'll see how how we go um, till the end of this meeting. But it sounds like maybe the um, architecture document is something that needs uh, probably most of the time. <clears throat> I would say maybe maybe even more than um, more than an hour. Uh, <laughs> more than two hours. Well. Uh, yeah, but then, then we run out of time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, so at least the bulk of the time, um, and and as as Hank mentioned, like for the counter signatures, we just get an update on what happened in Cozy and what uh, what they uh, decided, uh, or at least um, they think they decided, and uh, also a brief update about the use cases because they don't seem to be as controversial as some of the things that you brought up here. Yeah, I agree with that. So, yeah, I'm just bringing up the points because I think they're going to be important. Uh, like, I'm kind of looking down the road. Uh, if we do implement this thing, uh, what are going to be the uh, toe stubbing exercises? Okay. There? And, yeah. and uh, so anyway, so just those are just points. Uh, but I do think we need to think about those. So, mm -hmm. I am done. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, great. Great discussion. Um, so I, my some of my thoughts on all those topics. Uh, the audience, 
uh, this is a cool audience to be able to, you know, throw our uh, our ideas in front of stakeholders um, who need to understand how this will help them. So the audience includes lots of very savvy and security conscious end users, lots of developers, lots of infrastructure controllers, and you know, all those people are going to care about some aspect of this. So, um, in my mind, one of the I, I mentioned in the chat some ideas about, you know, my question of scaling. Uh, ITF is good at scaling things worldwide, uh, although occasionally bad too, you know, some things fall on their face. So um, in particular, how can, uh, I, one of my notions is how would an end user consumer gather all the evidence that they need to address some of the main use cases, uh, both uh, simple ones, which are going to be easy, and complex ones that, you know, we just want to make sure that we're going to handle it. Um, take a new user with uh, a new app, and that app is, you know, in some, who, who knows where they're getting it for or what technology, but it's based on thousands of open source libraries. And somebody noticed a vulnerability in one of those, and they want to say, you know, should I be worried about all the apps that I have installed with this new vulnerability. And so they're going to want to query um, uh, as um, uh, folks are pointing out a, a variety of skit instances, which are going to, you know, lead them on um, hopefully not a wild goose chase through uh, claims about whether or whether or not it's in the software, whether that vulnerability is uh, important for the way that software which is buried in some library you know a couple layers down is is used in that application and people are going to be putting up all these cool new attestations that says yeah we use that library we know it's got that vulnerability but it doesn't affect the way that we use it and then some testing company is going to weigh in and say well i don't know you know when i tickled the app it did seem to be you know, so there's just a bunch of claims and, uh, you know, uh, in my mind, different end users will query all that in different ways and have different answers for a certain app because um, because of the nature of their requirements and their threat model. So, you know, I see the, the query as being indeed something that's, that's important. I mean, there's lots of other queries that are much easier, you know, like what versions you know what's you, what's the s bomb for that library so that it, it can be incorporated in my bigger s bomb or whatever but uh you know as we combine both positive and negative results i i want users to be able to solve you know what dick keeps pointing out is the ultimate problem which i think is not you know it's not like skit is going to say this is trusted or even that source is trustworthy you know i mean they're all it, users of skit will use terms like that based on their their needs so so i would think that in terms of an agenda it would be useful to um maybe start off i don't know if this is true but start off um nailing down the terminology we will try to use today during the meeting for these terms even though i want to change some of them but you know pick terms and just say you know, here's a term that you'll learn more about in the architecture, and maybe the use cases use it that way, and maybe they don't. So maybe we have to, you know, for today, try to map all the language from these documents into something that's coherent. And that will help us then uh, do the use case document, do the architecture document, and maybe uh, to culminate the discussion of those two, have somebody run through a bunch of complicated end user queries that uh, that tie together again the concerns that um, that came up around identities you know like all I've got is this YubiKey here how am I gonna sign you know statements related to my role in in all of these things so that's some of my thoughts uh, thanks Dale I, I think um... The important point, my, my takeaway from what you said is, is really on also the point that Dick raised is like you want to take a perspective or explain the, um, 
the technology or what we are working on in terms of the end consumer in terms like how they how they would benefit from this um is that is that a, a good summary <laughs> Well, I, so I would, uh, that's a, definitely a piece of it. In other words, um, we want to be solving a problem that people have. So we want to have at least some um, things that we think the people in the room are going to use. Because if this room doesn't have people that want to use it, then, you know, this is all worthless. And I think it, it, you know, we have all kinds of good things. So, but driving from that end point, which I think we're not just, giving them a hammer that solves it. We're giving them a bunch of, you know, access to a bunch of information that they or their very smart skit clients will use to factor their, anyway. So we're gonna have a problem that we think we're solving and that's why we do use cases. And then we're gonna say now, if we have, you know, a, a useful number of people doing that, you know, use this might be useful if, if it's used, you know, by end users around the world, every time they touch uh, one of the Play Stores or install software on their laptop or whatever, but you know, it could be useful if it didn't get to that level. If it if it's just used by uh, an open source provider to to document their their um, S bomb, you know, that would already be a, a huge win. Although we kind of have that in Sig Store. So, you know, like what, uh, just how does this fit in and how do, how do things that we think will be useful drive um, the need for policies and scaling and, and, uh, and clients uh, that will be useful? So, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, who's next? Uh, Cedric. Uh, yes, thanks. Um, so first, on the form of the meeting, I agree with uh, what has been said before. I think uh, uh, it would be good to be more uh, directive for the agenda and uh, uh, that we more productive. I think uh, all the questions today are excellent questions, but there are also questions that we have visited in the past for which we try to uh, write some text that represents our uh, consensus in the architecture, uh, for most of them, not all of them. And also, for some of them, we have a long, detailed uh, uh, disc uh, discussion threads. And so I think uh, uh, I would argue we need to be a bit more disciplined because otherwise we start again on many of these issues out of context. And it's, uh, it's interesting that it's taking uh, too much time out of our meetings. Um, so that, uh, Cedric, on that one, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's always a challenge to be uh, disciplined uh, because on one hand um, I at least speaking for myself I don't want to cut discussions that I think will lead us somewhere um, because at the mm -hmm. beginning sometimes it's not clear what the challenges are uh, of course it's also difficult to to get totally or it's easy to get lost in in debates uh, which then won't help us uh, but uh, there's a fine line between them so we'll uh, yeah, well, obviously, uh, John and I will obviously have to pay attention to where things are going and try to get the best out of it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. No, again, I really don't want to cut the discussion. I think they are all great questions. But again, I think we should uh, more systematically go back to what we have written or discussed before to avoid uh, restarting from, from scratch because they are uh, quite natural questions. Yeah. So, uh, so, so on, on the, uh, back to the agenda. So, so yes, I can uh, present. Uh, a summary of where we are and of uh, progress on the architecture. I also hope that uh, Ori will be able to present uh, the summary of what's happening with uh, Kunter signing Kozi uh, at the meeting. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, either Hank or I can, can cover for him. Um, for the prior issues uh, that were discussed, so they were um, scalability. And they are, uh, in, in brief, I think the way we see scalability is by making sure that uh, the uh, transparent statement and receipts can be disseminated and checked offline. So you don't need to go to the, uh, to the ledger or to the, the registry uh, to uh, verify whether, uh, whether something has been registered. And also uh, with the receipt that provide freshness, you don't need to go to the registry to check for uh, uh, freshness, at least with the resolution of uh, a couple of hours, which should be sufficient for applications. So that's 
uh, that's the whole uh, technical intent of having uh, receipts to provide the offline checking so that it's case uh, like uh, replicated authenticated data without too much trouble on uh, identification i think we discussed a lot on the list on uh, how to identify issuers uh, and we are using the id that's controversial but it's also quite flexible and that's uh, what we have right now in the architecture what we discussed at the hackathon and that i would like to summarize uh, uh, at, at the meeting is how to identify individual uh, transparent statements and they are it's something that we did not have initially it's important for uh, Federation is also important for uh, the transparent statements that reference one another. And I think we made some progress at the last meeting, but it will be good to consolidate. So I hope to have at least uh, a couple of slides to, to catch up and to, to summarize on that problem, if that's, uh, if that's okay. Um, uh, that's, that's the main point I wanted to make. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thanks, Cedric. Um, uh, I think Yogesh, you're next. Yeah, yeah. So I've been patiently listening all the conversations. So my point to Charlie is, yes, these issues were discussed in the past, but I would be very happy if you could please systematically raise GitHub issues on the architecture on this. So the benefit of why, why I'm saying this, if we have already discussed this in the past, we can comment on your issue saying that this has been addressed and this has been discussed and this is the conclusion we have got so that we have a trace that the discussion happened and in future if some newcomer joins in the skit and he has a similar questions we can always refer him to the history and say this was discussed and so and so date and this was the conclusion made because of these reasons we have taken this direction in architecture and that's why this kind of uh, architecture has been laid down laid out rather than like just discussing here is a good thing but two meetings down the line everybody will forget and uh, somebody ask, may ask the very similar questions what you have asked so one aspect of this second thing is um, yes i i understand uh, it's in japan so you my anticipation is i may be wrong but my anticipation is that there would be many more new participants who might show up there with interest so our agenda should have a bit of yes it might be a little repeat of what we had already presented in the past itf sessions but maybe an initial 10 15 uh, minutes of an introduction round which kind of and evangelizes which kind of introduces the concept at a higher level so that the audience can make some sense of sense of it and go into a bit detail rather than jumping into the details straight away so that's another thing I wanted to uh, uh, inform. And the last thing is that, um, yes, uh, physical presence is good to present, but don't make it a, like a very hard um, kind of a bottleneck that if Steve is not able to travel or Ray is not able to travel or somebody else is not able to travel, then um, they will not be presenting because uh, I, I, at least I know certainly about the rats group that this is not like a very hard thing in the rats people are presenting remotely and it is not to be discouraged completely that that's what my take would be on the presentation uh, uh, certainly right yeah. uh Yogesh, certainly uh, yeah and yes um i think um that's all from my side yeah i wanted to be a little quick uh yeah so mm -hmm. oh, cool. thanks thanks good points uh dick thank you hannes so uh Transparency and trust are, are, are they're buzzwords that we're hearing all over the place here in the US and we're see it in, seeing it in policy documents like uh, National Cybersecurity Strategy. There was a document released just today uh, from the uh, National Infrastructure uh, Council, Advisory Council and, and Transparency and Trust. And they mentioned specifically the software supply chain. Uh, so th there's definitely an audience uh, of interested people who want to have access to something that uh, they that will give them insights into trans, into trustworthiness, and uh, I think that this this opportunity is what we what we have right now with Skid is to take a stand and say this is the platform that will satisfy the needs for greater visibility into the trustworthiness of the software supply chain. But, but I don't think we're making that case 
clearly enough, we have a lot of details about implementation like Merkle trees and other information. But I, I think that we really just need to have a higher level uh, discussion or position that we make clear uh, in the documents that this is what we are doing. And, and that, I, I think we're, 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 we're letting the forest, uh, the trees cloud the forest uh, by having all the details being the upfront and, you know, material. That's, that's, my, that's my comment. Thanks. Um, definitely, definitely true, uh, Dick. This was something I, I just talked with Steve about uh, in terms of like how should the architecture document uh, look like. And I think that's, um, there's some other good examples in the IDF on documents, architecture style documents that um, do exactly what you are saying. Like, uh, of course, the, the solution is important as well. And, and uh, as engineers, we always get overly excited about uh, the details of those solutions. But of course, uh, there are lots of other people out there, uh, including uh, uh, many of the newcomers that Yogesh was just talking about that we are likely going to see in Japan at the meeting um, that need a little bit of uh, uh, background. So we'll uh, definitely need to improve that. And I, I expect that that will happen uh, over time with, with uh, the help of uh, UDIC and, and others to actually fine tune uh, the wording so it becomes the document becomes accessible also to um, uh, folks from let's say uh, government institutions or government uh, or, or organizations that are close to the government like NIST, uh, uh, ENISA and, and uh, yeah all these these type of people yeah in fact I can give you a really good example um, Ann Newberger who works in the White House and you know I know this is U.S. specific but she used a really good analogy. Uh, she referred to what we have in some, some places here in the US are what we call restaurant uh, cleanliness scores. So you walk up to a restaurant and right there on the front, it shows you what their grade, their cleanliness grade is. Uh, and, and that's the kind of transparency that, that bill that the U.S. government is suggesting we provide to consumers of software as well is the ability to show them very clearly that the, the software is trustworthy or not. Uh, and, and I think Skit has the opportunity to, to fill that void uh, right now. So it's, it's a place we, I, th I would hope we'd want to make that really clear in our discussions, even including the presentation in Japan. Thanks. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, okay, uh, with a few minutes left, um, I think you all have given uh, a huge amount of information on how the agenda should look like. So definitely the the Hank uh, is going to talk about the countersigning of the receipts document at the end. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm thinking about a quick update, like 10 minutes or something. Is that good, Hank? Uh, with that or Ori can do that. Ori will be on oh, site as far as I know, and I think Ori could be the lead. I can be the fallback. Okay, uh, excellent. So let's say 10 minutes uh, summary. Um, then um, for the use cases, uh, Kay, uh, you, um, you could walk over this and provide a an, um, sort of brief introduction. So I'm thinking about maybe um, could we do like uh, maybe 30 minutes and use the rest for the architecture? Uh, yeah, that works for me. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And Cedric, you are going to uh, run the show uh, for the, for, I, I would say we could probably uh, sort of like split the architecture document presentation a little bit into uh, over a couple of people so we don't uh, so we have a little bit of uh, action uh, at the front. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking uh, uh, definitely. Uh, so let me let me think on uh, and ask then, for example, Steve, or whether he has uh, an opportunity to join. I know the time zone difference and so on is all difficult, but um, also from the terms of topics uh, that we definitely want to cover during this architecture debate is like. Um, um, the building blocks, the identity topic again. I know we have talked about some of those things before, but um, it's one thing to have a document and it, have it accepted as an initial working group item as a starting point. Um, but another story on whether uh, people are actually on, on the same page. And I don't think we are 
we have an agreement in the group on this whole identity topic uh, and also not on, on, on the way of the, uh, the different building blocks. And I think it relates a little bit to what Neil has been uh, mentioning as well, like looking at it from a, from a I think these um, looking at from an end consumer perspective or from a consumer perspective gives you a, an idea on like which parts are what we are working on as, as technology building blocks and which are components that are provided as uh, as part of let's say a service provider offering let's say that the event only lock um i've said enough um steve uh cedric are you new on the queue or is this a uh orphan entry so uh, i'm new but i will be uh, very brief uh okay. for identity do you mean issuer identity or do you mean something else uh, that that discussed um user identity so issue our identity yeah yeah, so we talked, yeah, that's the issue I didn't. Okay. So like we, we okay. talked about, uh, um, like today, uh, we talked about, um, like we had this PGP, we had X549, we, we talked in the past about OpenID, we talked about bits. Uh, I think we need to get an agreement on, on how this works. Uh, we throw okay. around those. Yeah, I can uh, have uh, three slides and then uh, I can put them on the list and we can discuss uh, at the meeting. Yes. Excellent, yes. okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the other quick thing I wanted to mention is, do we plan to bring any uh, thing to vote or to do we intend to get any uh, decision at the end of the meeting or it's uh, mostly informational this time? The, the hackathon? Yeah, uh, the, the session, the skit session. Do we expect any decision to be made at, uh, during the, at the end of the skit session or not? I'm assuming well, not. Uh, but if, I Otherwise, we should probably uh, focus the presentation around them as well. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully, we get some. Uh, we make some progress on on open issues with uh, the use cases uh, uh, and the architecture, the things that we discuss. Uh, that's I'm I'm hoping. Uh, of course, like two hours is uh, longer than this meeting, but still not enough. Um, so hopefully, you guys have side conversations uh, uh, in, in during the coffee breaks and so on and so on. Um, but yeah. But there's no big uh, decision in like we had, uh, let's say, in the summer uh, when we formed the working group, if that's what you mean. Okay, or no adoption of document as a draft. Uh, okay. Uh, no, we no no no. Uh, Steve. So um, sorry, I guess I I, I was jumping in because we were running low, and I just I saw in the queue with Cedric finishing. Uh, to uh, Yogesh's point, Yogesh, I wasn't trying to make a comment on uh, remotely presenting, just the facilitation of uh, getting the, the meeting minutes and the, sorry, not the meeting, but the presentation done while on site. So whatever works for folks that are there, that's great. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Um, I, I agree to Charlie's point. I think we, we're we trying to find that balance of uh, focus on agenda while making sure everybody's heard. So it, it is a, a difficult balance and I'm trying to learn from what other ITF groups have done. Cool. So okay. for, uh, I guess we're just about the last two minutes, I assuming next Monday's meeting, we will cancel because folks that are in uh, Yokohama will be there and yeah, we'll start to that, shift. Yeah, that's correct. There's no meeting. Uh, scheduled um and the, actually there are no meetings uh, currently scheduled for uh the weeks after the idf so we'll definitely have to uh think a little bit on whether we uh everyone uh needs to think whether we like those type of uh meetings is the cadence is that correct or should it be uh bi-weekly or whatever uh, is it a feedback i need from from you from everyone who participated all the time so, Hannes, I'm assuming that you are also traveling, right? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm going to try and from remote. John will be there in person. Okay. Thank you. Me? I'll just um, note, I, I love this notion of uh, eating food and the restaurant cleanliness as just one of the many things that a variety of consumers will have a lot of uh, requirements around that vary across different consumers. So that might actually be a fun one to write up. I put something in the chat about that. Cool. Yeah, I missed the name. Uh, maybe Dick, uh, I don't know if you posted that, uh, the name of that person. Okay. 
Okay, uh, Steve. Typing. Um, I just would suggest that we pick up on the weekly meetings after IETF 116. And to Charlie's point, we kind of figure out what the agenda is before the meeting, agree to that, and then keep time box to the discussions related to that agenda item so we can continue to make progress. And if there's a good discussion that comes out that we queue it up for the next week or triage from there. <clears throat> Ray, you want to say a few famous last words? Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I wanted to suggest that we summarize the times and, uh, you know, for remote participation to get the maximum of remote participation um, in this meeting, to put that on the list to, to make sure everybody knows when they should wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> of, course, of course. Yeah, yeah I, will, I will definitely update the agenda based on uh, the discussion and then uh, we'll work, uh, work with the presenters. And also post obviously the uh, the info again uh, in time um, so you guys don't forget. Okay, we ran over time uh, already, and so we'll uh, we need to finish here. Yeah, and uh, a side you... yeah. comment um, is that uh, please uh, in in Japan please take a feedback of uh, the timing because maybe after you come back or after we come back from Japan we might have to reschedule this meeting. Mm -hmm. To suiting to more of the Eastern times as well. So please make Maybe, sure that. Maybe, yeah, we can we can run a doodle poll uh, to see whether the whether the preferences for the time slots have changed. Good yeah. idea. Thanks, thanks, Shagosh. That's a that's a uh, very good point. Yeah. Hannes, I, I dropped the name in the chat. Her name is Ann Newberger. She works at the White House. Um, and I, I have a link to the video that she where she uses that analogy in that in that oh, chat. Perfect. Thank you, Dick. Okay. Uh, finishing here. And uh, I wish you all a good trip to Japan. And uh, we see and hear each other next week. Thank you. Thanks, Hannes. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thanks. Sounds good. Great stuff. Thanks.